Welcome to Electra Online. So what are the limits, upper and lower limits, of the neutron star? Of course, we're mostly interested in upper limits, but the lower limits is also rather interesting. Because we know that the upper limit of a white dwarf is 1.4 times the mass of the sun, so we wouldn't expect that there are pulsars that have less than the mass, the, the upper limit of the mass of a white dwarf. It turns out that's not the case. There is an overlap between the two. But first, let's take a look at what is it that makes it a limit on the upper side. Well, remember that neutron stars are formed when these massive cores of these supermassive stars collapse into a very dense ball of nuclear material. Well, that happens when the core has a mass of anywhere between one to about two and a half times the mass of the sun. So when it collapses, that's, going, that's then going to be the mass of the neutron star. And it turns out that masses with less than, or cores with less than 1.4 times the mass of the sun, in other words, less than the upper limit of a white dwarf, can also collapse into a neutron star. So when we do observations, you can see here that they vary anywhere from about one times the mass of the sun to a little bit over two times the mass of the sun. The vast majority of neutron stars fall somewhere between one and two times the mass of the sun. Now some of them are bigger than that. When you see the PSR here, that means a pulse source of radar emissions or pulsars. So many of the ones that we observe that are big are pulsars. You can see that the largest ones are even larger than two and a half times the mass of the sun, but there's some uncertainty in there. So if you take the lower limit of the uncertainty, you can see that except for a few, most of them are two and a half times the mass of the sun or lower. And so because of that, the general rule of thumb is that pulsars are somewhere between one times and two and a half times the mass of the sun, with some rare exceptions that sometimes they're a little bit smaller, and sometimes perhaps they may be slightly bigger than that. But that's the general range, the general accepted uh, value of the size of a neutron star. And of course, the reason why there's an upper limit is because when we go to the very center of a neutron star and realize how much matter, how much weight is pushing down towards the center, what an enormous pressure you would have at the very center. Imagine that you're a neutron at the center and you're trying to uphold that enormous amount of weight. Will the force caused by the pressure be too large and will the neutron then collapse in on itself? And we believe that maybe at the very center that may be the case for the larger neutron stars. So is there enough neutron material that is not being collapsed down that will uphold the size of the neutron star or will gravity just crunch it down to an infinitely small amount of size? Well, generally the upper limit, again, theoretically lies around two and a half times the mass of the sun and our observations seem to support that there is none that we observed so far, so far that are greater than three times the mass of the sun so we're pretty sure that our general rule of thumb is pretty close to the actual limits of neutrons or neutron stars I should say not neutrons they're very tiny of course so that gives us a feel for that so if someone were to ask you what is the typical size of a neutron star somewhere between one and two and a half times the mass of the sun and that is the way it is If it's bigger, it'll probably become a black hole. And smaller? It probably isn't enough, there's probably not enough mass to crunch it down into the size of a neutron star. And so the, probably the electron de degeneracy arrests the collapse and keeps it from collapsing. So it'll probably end up being a white dwarf at that point. But how long does it stay a neutron star? Forever. Forever? Forever and ever, yep. It's just a ball of nuclear material sitting there and will be there for the rest of eternity. Yeah, but it lets out light. Unless. Well, yeah, no, but that has to do with the rotational energy. So we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later. So, yes, it can lose rotational energy, but it can lose mass. The mass is the mass. What could happen is that two could collide. And if two collide, they could annihilate each other and turn into a black hole as well. And we've actually, know, we've actually um, uh, observed uh, two neutron stars colliding. So it just never changes? Just sits there forever. It doesn't have a half-life? Kind of sad, isn't it? Just sits there. 
and observed, cools down, just a ball of nuclear material sitting there. Yeah, but it cools down. Yes, it does. Right, it starts very hot and it cools down over time, but that's all it is. It just cools down, it's, it rotates slower, it does just the end of it. Well, yeah, and actually, we'll do some videos on what exactly happens over time. Yeah, but and how long does that take? Billions and billions of years. Yeah, it's a very, very slow process because it's so dense; it takes a long time for the heat to escape from it. Yep.